Dr. Kalu Edika Kalu is our guest here on Sunrise Daily this morning and he's still in the studio with us. Uh, just before we went on break, you were saying that the federal government should not cop out of yes. its responsibilities. You're about to make a second point just before we went. Yes, I think, um, as you very rightly pointed out, the sanctity of contracts is one thing, but it works both sides. It works on the side of uh, the government as well as on the side of those who sign this contract. So it's not as if uh, government is going to create an environment that will be an, a disincentive for potential investors. Mm -hmm. Then you look at the other side of it. Of course, other investors are looking to getting steady power. That is one indicator of uh, the... The, the fact that the projected cash flow of the, of the investment they want to enter will, will be realized if power is a major component. So uh, we have to look at both sides. So as I said, the issue should not be a zero something where you just say, okay, now we are going to cancel this or not. Government can take its time to vet through the issues, as I said. If the issues are technical, if it is management related, manpower or whatever, or something changed in the environment that affected the business plan, you sit down around with your technical uh, advisors and go through with this company and government can help them. There are facilities, technical financial out there. I think maybe in this program you get a little bit more detail out as some of the things that are available for people who can come in who've had a scores of years of experience who can assist the government to vet these people. Some of the contracts can be retained, but there may be others that are so clearly inadequate. I mean, when somebody is uh, running around Europe or America trying to sell this thing while the consumer is waiting, consumers are waiting, clearly, there is no basis for a uh, uh, faulting government uh, doing something about it. In but, fact, but government is also culpable. I mean, you heard the oh, message today, even though you... He talking about you is <laughs> uh, an, an issue that someone might say it's really at the micro level in terms yes. of reporting your neighbor who's consuming electricity without paying but then government also has huge debts a lot of government power status ministries consuming electricity well, and see, not paying for it yes if these things are probably properly privatized to those who have the muscle they know how to deal with it. It's like uh, government getting into contracts with uh, residents and their landlords and so on. Government doesn't have to. They, 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 there is provision under the law. So we don't have to be begging them. We have to be begging users to be reporting their neighbors. The, those who supply the power must find ways of making sure that these things are not just tapped anyhow. They, they inspect them. They are the ones that uh, extend the lines to additional users or to extend the lines to deepen those who are already in the existing form. So it works both ways. You, but, see, but you don't go abroad and, and hear people saying, I report your neighbor for tapping. The, the neighbor, the, the law, the law should deal with that without the government spending its time complaining about people in a, a shopping center not putting out their single bulbs. But, but, but just quickly, right. uh, you know, as we currently know that quite a number of the companies are cash-strapped and, and finance continues to remain a problem, how would you recommend that, you know, some, some of those companies get out of the financial difficulty they found themselves? Well, as we say in economics, everything is connected to everything else. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, the state of the economy the credit facilities, the cost of credit, the cost of funds. Again, you have to go back all these micro, macro issues. Are we able to access funds that will give us, at any given point in time, the minimum cost of capital? You see, I know you know what I'm referring to. We, we've discussed all of this. But of course, abstracting from that for a moment, of course, they, they can go back to their bankers, they can apply for additional credit. So, being cash strapped is a function of your potential earnings. If your potential earnings are there and it is just you are strapped of cash, that's a standard way to handle that. So you apply for more credit. And those who have uh, vet this credit can check your applications and see where you are hurting, whether it's in terms of the, the uh, uh, combination of short-term loans rather than the medium and longer-term loans. They can reorganize it. Without the government getting involved, this should be within all the financial sector. So that, that is, it should be the financial sector should provide different menu for producers to know what to ask for in order to relieve their cash, cash trap situation. I'm going to ask you this one, and it's going to be very quick. Yes. yes or no? Do you see light at the end of the tunnel for the mess we found ourselves in?
Well, we don't have light. You're asking me if we've seen light. I didn't have thought. For, <laughs> no, okay, no, I'm just uh, being fictitious. But clearly, uh, with the way the government is seized with the, this thing, this is one of the areas by which the government will be judged. I mean, you see the minister going around visiting all these places. That is what gives us light, a sense of light at the end of the tunnel. But more specifically, we should go back to find out whether those who are managing these things, whether they are the distributors or the transmitters or the generators, are they sticking to the contract which require them to do so much? If they are not, I don't say, I'm not saying cancel the contract, certainly not, but you should review them, give the consumer, and we're all consumers, including the government, you give the consumer a sense of uh, hope that we are not just going to be waking up and, uh, and uh, just carrying on. It's incredible. I was driving into Abuja last night, and the place is in darkness for a city of this size. That is, that is not on. You saw a recent CNN program. Darkness all over the place, and they do things on Malaysia or Singapore. It's lights all over the place. We, we, that's where we belong. That's our league. Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Korea. But even by African standards like South Africa, we are way behind way behind. They are talking about 40,000 plus megawatts. We are talking about 3,000 megawatts. Well, Dr. Kalo Kalo, I could go on and on with this discussion, but we have to thank you most kindly for coming thank you very much. on Sunrise Daily. He is a former Minister of Finance. So Sunrise Daily will continue in just a moment. Don't go away. <laughs>